OK, Alex, main course, main event, the big one. Yeah. And you've obviously been bigging up the hoggy all day, so uh, how do you feel? Yeah, happy. Um, I think it's going to be summery, not too light. Uh, and it's, it's kind of my style. There's a little bit of slow cooking and a little bit of fast cooking. Well, well. Very pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Rustic? Yeah. I'll tell you, it looks a bit on the dark side. First, I'd like to taste the hog here. For me, the flavour is superior. It's what I believed in. It's, it's tender to eat, and it's also, you know, it's got the flavour of mutton, but the tenderness of lamb. I wouldn't say that it holds up any stronger flavour. Um, or even better flavour, to be honest. This is the little su the lamb yeah, surprise, so isn't that's, it? That's all yours to play with. Not as moist as I'd, I'd expect. Quite dry. You think this is achievable for 100 people? Banquet in the summer, as well Highness Prince of Wales. I've got no problems with serving this at the banquet. I think it's got potential, but it's missing that X factor, as they say. Yeah. I'm really happy now, because obviously I've been uh, promoting Hoggett all day and uh, yeah I think I've justified it I think the flavour was a little bit superior uh, you know I am a massive fan of lamb at the end of the day but I just think Hoggett is that one step higher finally it's Richard's turn to plate up at last his beef is ready if not cooked in quite the way he'd like but at least one element of his dish has gone to plan the shallot crisps finally got a crisp that uh, has come out of the oven <laughs> I've done something right in the oven this week. A um, crisp, that's crisp. Yeah, exactly. He's just got to pan fry his terrine and his globe artichokes before sealing the water bath beef. He begins with a shallot puree, then adds the leek and potato terrine. He places fried baby leeks and tops with the beef and cubed artichokes, then finishes with the shallot crisps and a red wine jus. Well done, Richard. Yeah, happy? Yeah. Got there in the end? Yeah, definitely. And I have to take my hat off to these guys who are guys. changing places and let me get out, you know, really what nice. I wanted to do. So we should taste it? Yep, yeah, let's do it. OK. A few changes today, Richard. Uh, tell me about the beef. What happened there? I really wanted to stick with the oven, but, you know, I just okay. couldn't, couldn't get it working, basically. And, you know, I think we've achieved, uh, you know, a yeah. very, very similar result. So, James, first impression? Yeah, very elegant. I think the boy's pulled it out of the bag, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. So the beef, happy with the flavour? You know, happy with the, the actual cooking of it. You know, it's nice uh -huh. and nice and pink, but it's not, you know, it's rare, but it's not too bloody. Well aged, you can taste it. For me, I tend to go for ribeye, just because I prefer the flavours of ribeye. I think the terrine's, uh, you know, got good flavour. I'd say the terrine maybe lacks a little bit of flavour. A successful onion crisp? Yeah, exactly. Fair play. It just adds that that extra dimension of crispness. It's really nice for him to actually pull off a crisp today. He's obviously had a lot of problems again with the oven. Well, they crisp, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It is exactly what it says on the tin. That's going to be a tough one to beat. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Executed well, presentation is beautiful. I think this dish is a one to watch. I think it's a very visual dish and, you know, it's quite elegant. Um, and achievable. And, and I'd, be, I'd be pleased to serve yeah. that at, at the banquet. I'd be, I'd be quite proud. Today's been a really tough day. Didn't really know how I was going to come back from that, and I can only get judged on what, what I presented, and, you know, I'm quite, quite happy with what I eventually served. <laughs>